Articulating your thoughts can be oddly difficult. You may think of yourself as a great public speaker and a friendly people person who's good with words, but being able to articulate your thoughts and reactions in a way that's productive and builds up the conversation can be really difficult. I've got seven little tricks I use to get better at this. Let's get to it. Before I jump into today's rant, I wanted to plug a couple upcoming events I'll be speaking at in hopes of maybe meeting you there. Tomorrow's the first one. I'll be speaking May 20th at Utah Zone Dev Mountain as part of their lecture series. Additionally, I'll be speaking at vSchool come the end of this month on May 28th at 7 p.m. as part of their very first design party. Woohoo! Lastly, I'll be making a trip back up to my alma mater on June 13th. More details to come on that. All these events will be recorded and posted here in the future if you can't attend in person, but I hope you do. I really do. It would be a lot of fun. All right, back on topic. When you were in school or as you came out of school, how much emphasis did you think speaking was going to be part of your career? Obviously, you've got to talk. We don't work as mutes. But did you consider the fact that on a weekly, if not daily basis, you could find yourself presenting to a group of peers your ideas and work? Better yet, maybe even hourly, you could be collaborating with someone and the need to build a better product together. In either of these scenarios, being able to articulate your thoughts will come as a much needed skill set. So today, I've got seven tricks I practice to become better at this soft skill. Number one, prepare. I know you know your project, but simply just knowing it doesn't mean it will translate into sentences that will help others know the project. So much wrong can be avoided if you simply just set aside some time to think through what you want to say in an upcoming scenario. Plan it out. Script it out. Actually go into a room and practice presenting it. I guarantee you'll find yourself unhappy with the initial way you present your ideas. Therefore, just get that first bad script out of the way. The second time around, you'll already know so much better how you want to share your ideas. Number two, speed. I don't often see people presenting too slow. In fact, it's the opposite. Most of the time, people accidentally end up sounding like an auctioneer or the guy who voiced the commercial from Micro Machines back in the day. The Micro Machine Man here presenting the genuine original, classically collectible, most midget miniature replicas of the real things, Micro Machines. Most of us don't intentionally speak fast. It's a byproduct of either just being really excited or even a little bit nervous. Take a breath. Recognize that if you finish a sentence and people take a moment to respond or comment, it's probably because they're mentally playing catch up and they miss something. Number three, be clear and concise. This trick will be much easier if you're working on all the other tricks. While I don't think you need to go all Jack Black in the School of Rock, tip of the tongue, teeth in the lips. It's important to think through what you want to say instead of just blurting out a comment. This will help people really understand what you're thinking and make follow-up questions easier instead of having to ask clarifying questions. Be clear on what the point is and the value you want to get across. Don't be the person who drones on for two to five minutes and what could have been said in 30 seconds. Number four, fluctuation. Smiling when you talk is actually one of the easiest things you can do to help others pay attention. Another thing you can do is to listen to your tonality and your fluctuation. Is there a rhythm or are you going all economics teacher? The Hawley Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs. The rise and fall of your statements is natural and is one of the fundamentals of captivating an audience. Number five, filler words. This is easier said than done. If you practice beforehand, you can avoid this pitfall. Don't say two words in a row that mean the same thing, meaning you don't need to ideate and to think about it. You already said you need to ideate. The us and ums and other filler words can also become the bane of some people's grammatical existence. And uh, I believe that our ed- education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as. And Now this one doesn't bother me as much unless it becomes every other sentence. 
When someone is using us and ums between sentences, to me, I interpret it like this. Um, I haven't made my point yet, but um, I don't quite have the words ready to make the point. Um, but if I stop talking, um, I won't be able to talk again in this meeting. Number six, leave out emotions. I should really do an entire rant on this point, but check your emotions at the door, right? People will disagree, and done well, it's my favorite part of collaboration. Differing opinions coming together to make a greater end result, I love it. But in order to do it right, you can't get emotionally tied up in the conversation. It's never an attack on you personally. If you respond to a comment or suggestion with emotion, all credit out the door. Again, take a breath. Think through how you want to respond. And when you've got it in your head how you'd like to respond, take a last second evaluation if it's really adding value and getting a constructive point across. Really try to strip out any belittling, dismissing, or passive aggressive comments out. Last but not least, number seven, to become better at articulating your thoughts, you really need to spend just as much time listening as you are reciting what it is in your head you want to say. Without listening, you might just be missing the purpose of what someone else is trying to say. You might actually already be in complete agreement and just using different verbiage. Instead of responding, acknowledge you're on the same page and move on to the next step. Don't muddy the waters by saying something three different ways if people understood the first one. Listen for understanding. There it is, all seven tricks bundled up for you to remember next time you walk into a meeting to present or sit down with a peer to collaborate. Plan ahead, slow down, speak clearly, focus on natural tonality and fluctuation. Remove those filler words, leave your emotions out of it, and don't forget to listen.